So I ended up with an extra Xbox, and I didn't know what to do with it, so I checked with Google, and Google said, you should turn it into a PlayStation 2. So that's what I did, and I'm going to show you how in this video. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and this video we're going to be taking a look at this Xbox here, which I have turned into an emulator machine, basically to play some PlayStation 2 games, plus some other stuff. So let's talk about how we got here. So I had a gaming computer for sale locally here, and I had a, a young man that was interested in getting one because he wanted to graduate from uh, console gaming to PC gaming, and he just didn't have enough money to uh, make that happen, so he asked if he could trade this in as a partial trade towards the computer, and uh, I really didn't need it. I've already got an Xbox. I've got actually one of these upstairs that we have on the family TV. I've got a Series X in my office to play some games on, so I really didn't need it, but I thought, let's uh, go ahead and help this guy out, get him into a, a gaming machine, and uh, and we'll find some use for this thing. So like I said in the intro, I googled, what do you do with an extra Xbox Series X? And I found some guides on how to turn it into a pretty decent emulation machine, and I've got plenty of emulation machines around here from small computers to handhelds to just all kinds of things, Raspberry Pis, um, mini PCs, basically everything. If you've watched my channel, you'll see some of the stuff that I've been working on over the years. But I thought, hey, I've never turned one of these into it, so let's go ahead and try that out. So to get this going, you're obviously going to need an Xbox of some sort. Now this Xbox Series S is just what I happen to have extra here. You could do the same exact steps that we're going to talk about for a Series X, and you could actually do the same thing for an Xbox One. There are a couple differences, but you can get there. Obviously, performance differences, the Xbox One is going to be a little bit slower than the Series S. The Series S is going to be a little bit slower than the Series X, so kind of keep that in mind. But from everything I read, it said that a PlayStation 2 game should run just fine on this, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> loaded up some... Marvel Ultimate Alliance. It's been a while since I've played that, and uh, it's it's playing great. So so it works just fine. So obviously you're going to need a an Xbox of some sort. You're going to need an external drive. I just happen to have this Xbox branded Seagate uh, removable drive here. You could do the same thing with a, a thumb drive or something like this. You know, a, an NVMe drive. You can use just about anything. Um, but that's what you're going to store your games on. And then you're going to need, obviously, some games. I've got a pretty decent collection of PlayStation 2 games and currently don't have any PlayStation 2s hooked up to my TVs in the house. So this was a good little exercise to see if I could, you know, hook up something more modern to a TV and be able to play this. Now, we are going to be able to use this for other things also. We can still use it as a regular Xbox. We can use it for other emulation. In this case, I'm just going to be showing you how to get it all set up, and then once you get it set up, you can add whatever you want to it. Besides all the obvious things that you're going to need physically to get this done, you're also going to need to sign up for the Microsoft Development Account, which is going to allow you to install the dev kit onto this Xbox, and that's what's going to allow you to unlock putting different types of softwares on there. Now, signing up for the dev account does cost $15 currently, and you do have to have a credit card or debit card to do so. But once you sign that up, then uh, you're all set to go. You're going to add this to your dev kit account. And then uh, it's going to be as easy as just installing a couple of things and getting it all set up. Now, as far as how much time this takes, it's not something that's super easy. And it's not something that's super hard. So it, it's just as long as you can follow some directions you're going to get it done. It's just there is a lot of steps going back and forth between a computer, which is another thing that I forgot to tell you. Yes, you're going to need a computer. Um, going back and forth between a computer and the Xbox, you know, setting up your account, copying files over, plugging into here, plugging this back into your computer, plugging it back into here. You know, it's, it's going to take several steps. And to get this done, I followed all the steps using a step-by-step -step guide that Russ over at Retro Game Core has put together, and I'm going to link that down below. Instead of recreating everything and doing it all, which took me probably an hour or more to get it all done step-by-step, -step, 
instead of redoing that on the video, I'm just going to link you to that and say follow his directions because they are great. They are comprehensive and they will get you to this point. So basically in this video, I'm going to tell you how to get to those instructions. I'll give you some tips on some things that I learned along the way. And then I'm going to show you what I got finished here. All right, so the basic steps that you're going to follow in Russ's guide are basically you're going to set up the developer account that's going to be all on a website at Microsoft, pay the 15 bucks, set up the account. I happened to sign up for a new email address. I didn't use the same Microsoft address that I've had for 20 years. I used a different one. I don't think I needed to, but I did just in case. Uh, so you got to make that decision on your own. And I went ahead and signed up for it. That was pretty easy. It gives you a little dashboard. And from the dashboard, you're going to add your device to the development dashboard. Basically, once you set up your Xbox, and I set this one up from scratch, you download a dev kit app from the App Store, and then it gives you a special code. You put that code back into your computer, and then your developer account now knows that this thing belongs to you. It belongs to the dev account, and that's what's going to allow you to remote into this and start adding some software. So sign up for the account, add this, remote into it, add some software to it, and then from there, you're basically going to add the programs that you want for this. Now, I've added two programs so far. One is RetroArch. If you know anything about emulation, you know exactly what that is. If you've ever set up RetroArch, it's the same exact setup. Um, lots of steps to do, but once you get it set up, then it's real smooth. And then for PlayStation 2, there's a program called XBSX2, and that's basically the PlayStation 2 emulator. For most of your earlier consoles, you're just going to use RetroArch and have the right cores, and Russ's Guide has all the suggested cores that you would use for each of those different consoles, um, and then he has a list of separate emulators that you would use for dedicated systems like the PlayStation 2 and maybe Dolphin emulator for your Nintendo products. So let's go ahead and back out of this game real quick, and I'll show you... that this is a program here, this is the Xbox or the XBSX 2.0 and this is going to be the PlayStation 2 emulator. Now to get this game on here, um, when we see the game list, I did a, uh, a rip of this disc. Now Russ has a guide on how to rip this disc in a computer. Now that's assuming that you got a computer still that's got a DVD drive in it and my PC does not have a DVD drive in it. I've probably got a, an old laptop around here somewhere that did, but I grabbed an old MacBook, actually a MacBook Pro, like a 2010 MacBook Pro, and if you've seen any of my other videos on the channel here, you know that I do a lot of work on old MacBooks, so I grabbed one of those, threw this in there, didn't even have to download any software, I just used the uh, disk utility, made an image of it, renamed it into an ISO, and then just copied that onto this drive in the correct directory, and boom, it, here it is. Now, I did have to go and download the art for it also. That's an extra step, but if you're going to be adding a bunch of games on here, then take the extra time and add the artwork on there. That way it'll look nice, nice for you. So this emulator is just like any other ones. Once you get into the game, you have lots of settings that you can change for your graphics and for your emulation and stuff like that. I was running it upscaled all the way up to 4K on this little monitor here. And that's like a 6x native resolution, and it was still getting 60 frames per second. I guess that's going to probably depend on the game itself. Um, but even at 1080p, like a 3x native resolution, it still looks great. And then besides the XBSX2, we also have RetroArch. And like I said, if you know anything about RetroArch, you know you're going to load some cores, you're going to load some games, and you're just going to jump into your favorite game and have some fun. So this video really serves as just an introduction to the concept of using an Xbox as an emulator, setting it up for your favorite games. Uh, all the hard work was done by Russ, setting up that guide on how to get this thing done. Uh, like I said, I'll leave links down below on where to find that guide. He's got videos, he's got also just a written guide I followed the written guide because I thought it'd be quicker, and I did reference some of the videos here and there just to 
kind of see that I was going in the right direction. So check out that guide. If you've got an extra one of these that you're not using for anything else, go ahead and put it to good use. And if you've got a bunch of old games that you'd like to put on a modern system, then this is a perfect example of how to do that. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really hope that you got something out of it. If you did, I appreciate that thumbs up. That helps out the channel a lot. If you want to see more, go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. See if there's something in there worth subscribing for. But I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.